people come looking for me all the time. They just don't find me. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I am Raphael and I am here to review season three, episode five of The Real Housewives Losing Their Mind Over a Tequila Bottle, Ultimate Girls Trip Thailand. We start the episode off on the fifth day of the vacation and we see Pepsi, the concierge. He's outside getting these matching outfits together for everyone because he has a morning kickboxing class planned for them. He goes inside to try to get them to come outside and participate. He goes up to Giselle first. Giselle, she turns him down and she tells him, mm, I'm actually going to the pool first. Sorry, Pepsi, which I thought it was so rude of any of them to not come outside and at least give the man like five to 10 minutes of your day to participate in the activity. Like it may not be your cup of tea, but at least he's trying to get everyone to come together and do something fun instead of fighting over alcohol by Bottles, but we'll get to that. So she tells him no. So he goes over to Portia. Portia, she tells him, um, wait a minute, Pepsi. Hold on. Because if it doesn't involve me taking somebody's husband, I don't want to do it. I don't want to exercise. I'm sorry. Which I also thought it was rude. Like Pepsi, he was the same person who was just looking for KFC for you a couple of episodes ago. And yet you can't even come outside to acknowledge what he was trying to do for the whole group. Like... Heather actually agrees to do it because she feels that she has a lot of built up frustration inside from what Whitney has been accusing her of these past couple of days. Whitney, she's also down to do it, but Whitney would say yes to anything. As long as there's a camera in front of her, she's down to do whatever for TV. Marisol and Alexia, they don't do it. That's disappointing. They're in the confessional talking shit. You know, Marisol is not going to do any activity if there's no alcohol involved. Leah, she's down to do it. So they're all standing outside in their cute matching outfits. And speaking of cute, you know, did you all see the uh, the kickboxing instructors? You know, I mean, I wouldn't mind throwing a couple of punches, a couple of kicks, if it meant that I was being taught by them, you know? <laughs> so we get this class on the go, and Heather, Heather, I thought you had so much, you know, built up frustration inside. What was going on? Because she was boxing, and she was just like this. This is for everything that Whitney has been accusing me of on this trip. Oh, oh my shoulder. Oh, okay, again? Okay, okay. This is for Jen Shaw, who called me Shrek on season one. Uh, ow. Oh, my knuckles. Okay, hold on. Okay, one more. Okay. This is for everybody who doesn't believe me about my black eye situation. Oh, 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 oh ouch. I need to sit down. Can I, can I get some water? <laughs> I'm like, Heather, what was that? You were so quick to body slam Whitney on your season, but yet here, what were those baby punches? Unlike Whitney, Whitney was too ready. Whitney said, yeah, I'm not gonna get body slammed against the window anymore on season four. <laughs> Because she was doing good. She was just like, okay, come at me. Okay, I'm going to pretend that you're Meredith. Okay, come at, come at me, Meredith. Uh, okay. Uh. Oh, Lisa Barlow, you too? Uh, uh. Oh, Mary Cosby, you're back for season four? Uh, uh, uh. Oh, Heather, you want to body slam me again? Come on, bring it, bitch. <laughs> like, she was too ready. I'm like, wow, Whitney, that's the fastest I've seen her move. Meanwhile, back inside, Marisol and Alexia, they're in the confessional talking shit about Candace and how Candace was so loud and screaming the night before. That's hysterical coming from her when her best friend Alexia is one of the loudest person on her show specifically this past reunion on Miami they were all screaming at each other at the very same time to the point where Andy the host he couldn't even hear himself and he had to tell them shut the hell up and I just feel like Marisol just does not like Candace whatsoever Alexia I feel like she could be indifferent about everybody but Marisol she makes it no secret that she doesn't like Candace meanwhile back outside Giselle she's in the pool she calls Pepsi over she tells Pepsi when we were on the yacht I bought this big box bottle of Casa Azul tequila and when we got back to the villa I was looking for the bottle and I can't find it and I want my bottle right now Pepsi do you know where it is Pepsi is just looking at her like is Jamal coming <laughs> Can you imagine though? But Pepsi says, uh, no, I don't know where it is. So Giselle, she places blame on the cast and she, she tells him, hmm, do you think that somebody on this cast took the bottle, Pepsi? Pepsi, I feel like he had no choice but to say yes because the second that he says no, who is Giselle going to accuse next? Him and the staff of the villa. So of course he had to say, yeah, somebody on the show took it. That's that. Giselle says, well, we're going to get to the bottom of this. And I just don't get what the big deal is. Like Giselle, it's a bottle of tequila. It's probably empty by now. Why do you want it so bad? Do you want to take it back home as a souvenir and put flowers in it? Like, I just don't understand what the big deal was with Giselle and this whole tequila thing. Again, making something out of nothing. Then we see Leah telling Heather that somebody messaged her what Portia had posted on her Instagram, aka Leah was stalking Portia's Instagram page. And Portia had posted a group shot photo of them at the elephant activity. And she tagged everybody in the picture except Leah and Candace. 
petty. Leah, she was just like, mm, I don't get it. I mean, she doesn't like me for what reason? You know what? It is what it is. I'm not going to force her to like me. Candace, she walks in. Leah tells her about it. Candace thinks it's childish and high schoolish. Like, why are you even doing that? Obviously, you're doing that because you're trying to rattle us. You want to start drama. And guess what? I'm going to give it to you. And I just wish that, you know, Candace, you knowing that if this is really what Portia is trying to do, trying to get underneath your skin and Leah's skin, you know, why even give her the satisfaction of confronting her about it? Like, who cares if she didn't tag you in the picture? Like, you obviously don't like her. Leah, you obviously don't like her either. Portia doesn't like either, either one of you. So why does it even matter? The bigger question here is, why are you posting pictures of me when you obviously don't like me? That's the question that we should be focusing on. So then Candace, she says it perfectly in her confessional. You know, with Portia, Portia, I feel like she knows exactly what she does and says to people, you know, to get underneath their skin. And she likes to hide behind the whole, oh, what? I'm just bubbly. I'm just dumb. I don't really know what's going on. What's happening? Who said that type of personality? She likes to go underneath the radar. That way nobody calls her out on it. But she's not as dumb as she thinks that she is. And I'm like, I kind of agree with Candace. I do agree. But at the same time... I feel like with Portia, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's not an act. <laughs> Sometimes she's really not, you know, fully up there in the head, but I agree. I just wish that Candace would have just noticed this and would have just said, okay, so what? She didn't tag me. Let's keep enjoying the vacation instead of trying to confront Portia about it later on. Like, who cares? But, you know, and the other thing too that's annoying is that, again, doing Leah's dirty work because Leah is just like, well, I'm not going to say anything to Portia because I know that Candace is going to say something to her. So I'm just going to, you know, hide behind her and that's that. Then we see Giselle. She's going to Portia. She's telling her about how she's going to get down to the whole, uh, the killer situation and she's gonna find her bottle and just make it a big deal out of nothing so Portia is telling her um well you know what it has nothing to do with me because I wouldn't take it I don't even drink tequila I'm all about Hennessy so then Giselle starts listing out the suspect she thinks it's Heather because she can't tell the truth she's always lying or getting caught up in her words or being exposed by Whitney every five seconds and I'm shocked that Giselle doesn't accuse Marisol of stealing it because Marisol she's the one that's always drinking alcohol so you would think that maybe she took it but we all know that this is just another reason for Giselle to pile all this blame on Candace once again and make her look like the bad person. Pepsi tells everybody that they're going shopping and eating in the town of Puckett today. So they're all getting ready. Alexia, I'm not sure what was going on with her outfit because it looks like it was chewed up by a bunch of dogs and she picked it up off the ground and said, hmm, I think it's still wearable. Let me put it on. <laughs> Her and Heather, they both looked like they were going to go film the next season of American Horror Story, Coven. Both of them looked like witches. Leah had on this interesting looking skirt with two holes on the side, which I thought it was pretty cool to look at. And she lets us know that she has no panties on. And I'm like, so you have your period. You have diarrhea. It's 91 degrees outside. And now you have no panties. You know, Leah is nothing but diarrhea and good vibes, and that's it. So they get going. They're on their way to Puckett, and of course, Marisol, she was just like, ¿Quién quiere un caqui? Who wants a caqui? And I'm like, Marisol, don't you want a Gatorade, like a bottle of water, like some apple juice, orange juice, anything? Like, we have to go to alcohol every single time, but okay. So they all, you know, get their own little cockies. Portia in the van, she's drinking it, and she, she thinks it's way too strong. And I can only imagine, like, she probably, like, pours a bunch of alcohol and then, like, 1% of juice <laughs> or soda. So then Portia was just like... Oh my God, this feels like it's burning in my chest. You know, I feel like Marisol, the reason why her stomach hurts a lot is probably because she's drinking a lot of jet fuel. <laughs> Oh, Portia, terrible. So they get to Puckett. They're introduced to their tour guide. And as they're walking around town, Heather, she makes this off-putting joke, which I want to say that she was not serious about. In the confessional, she says, oh, my two favorite things to do in the world, exploit third world countries for shopping and also capitalism. And I'm like, Heather, again, it's the fifth episode and you have still not made yourself seem like a good person on this show so far. <laughs>
Everyone is shopping around in the stores and Pepsi, he's also with them. Leah, she's still talking about her period diarrhea, period diarrhea. And she's also extremely hot. She's fanning her vagina. And I just don't get why she decided to come to Thailand on this trip when she knew she couldn't handle it physically. I mean, it's painful just watching her try to be a good sport and try to go about the activities and everything. But you know that she's miserable and this is like torture to her. Next thing you know, she starts whispering, oh, my legs are feeling wobbly. It's too high. And boom, she goes down and she faints on the floor. Everybody rushes to her. Pepsi's putting a cold water bottle on her stomach. Candace is keeping her company. They're all looking at her. The paramedics are called and she's just laying there. She's awake and she's conscious, but obviously everything that was going on with her was just way too much for her to handle it. So they're like, yeah, we're going to put her in the car with air conditioner and we're going to drive her back home. And that's that. And... You know, I guess that was it. While she was on the floor, though, she did make me chuckle because as she's laying down, the paramedics are trying to see what's going on. And she was just like, wait, 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 hold on. I don't have any panties on. <laughs> I'm like, Leah. <laughs> Okay, they sit down to eat and as they're eating Giselle, she pulls out her phone with a picture of the tequila bottle that is missing and she tells them, oh, so I've been thinking about this all day and it's really bothering me. Remember my tequila bottle, the Casa Blue bottle that I brought on the yacht? Remember this? Remember this? Candace, do you remember this? Heather, Whitney, Marisol, Alexia, remember? Remember? So I'm really bothered because I really, really, I really, really, I want my bottle. I want it right now. Like, I want it right now or I'm going to throw a tantrum. I need it right now and I have a couple of suspects. Portia, I know it can't be you because you were drinking Hennessy with me, so it's not you. Alexia, no, not you. Candace, you know, you're one of my suspects. Uh, Marisol, you're one of my suspects. Heather, you're also one of my suspects. They're all looking at her like, what is she talking about? <laughs> Like, what's going on? A tequila bottle? What's going on? Uh, what's her name? Candace in the confessional. She says, uh, if you want, I'll just send you the money for a new bottle. It's no issue. What's the problem? Giselle goes on to say, oh, it took three weeks to get it shipped to my house, my tacky house at that. And it took three weeks and I really want my bottle. I just really, really want it. Like, who took it? And I just, I just don't understand. You know, even if I am trying to understand what Giselle is trying to get at, I still don't get it. Like, I don't get what the big issue is over this damn bottle bottle it's not even a cute bottle if we're really being realistic <laughs> so heather she whispers over to candace like wait somebody took a bottle and before she even whispers over giselle she shuts it down by telling um heather excuse me i'm talking right now <laughs> oh just oh G giselle you know, Gis Giselle really knows who to play around with because absolutely not. Like the second that she would have even said that to me, I would have told uh, Candace, Marisol, and whoever else at the table, okay, let's go girls. We're going to go sit with Pepsi <laughs> and, and leave Giselle to her tantrum. Like, who are you talking to? And then here comes Heather with her low self-esteem in the confessional. Oh my God, like the mean girl, like the cool girl just talk to me. Like, I don't care if she called me fat or if she hurt my feelings and she called me ugly. The fact that she's paying attention to me, I just think it's so cool. Like, I'm not making that up. She really said that in the confessional. <laughs> I'm like, Heather, you are so pathetic. Like, I want to like Heather because I do think I do think that she's hilarious. But oh my goodness, like, have some self-esteem. Have some love with you. Like, come on now. Like, that is not cute. Like, that's really not cute. But Giselle, she continues on by saying, Marisol, you know, I'm accusing you. Marisol was just like, why? Because I'm a drinker. And Giselle was just like, no. And I'm like, wait, why? <laughs> That'll be my first red flag of why she's accusing her. But she was just like, no, because in the van, you said something about, oh, you like to keep the bottles and then, you know, replace it with alcohol and put it in the fridge and stuff. So I remember that when I was showering and I'm like, Giselle, you were thinking about this conversation from days ago in your shower while you were showering? Like, you really need to get a hobby. Like, come on now. Like... And then I believe we move over to Candace. She was just like, Candace, I'm also looking at you as a suspect, but I'm not sure. Candace was like, yeah, you could, you could think of me as a suspect. And I love what she did. She put her middle finger up in Giselle's face. <laughs> she was just like, yeah, suspect this. <laughs> because next thing you know, Giselle... Oh my goodness, Giselle, she has the audacity. She tells everybody, so, you know, when we get back to the villa, I'm going to go through everybody's room. There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> 
<laughs> like absolutely not. I would have been like, okay, Giselle, you could go, you could try to go through my room, but the second that we get back to my villa, you, to the villa, I'm gonna be standing right at the door of my room. And the second that you even try to approach me, if we're swinging, we're swinging, but we're, you're not coming in here to look through my stuff. Like that is crazy how they're all just allowing Giselle to talk to them and say whatever to them. And they're just like, okay with that. Like, oh, okay, do whatever. Heather, I expect that from her, but Marisol, she was just like, oh, okay. Whitney, she was just fascinated that she's there. <laughs> Candace was like, uh, no, you're not going through my stuff. That's that, it is what it is. And meanwhile, Pepsi, he's standing right behind them at a table. He's also eating. He's looking on in such disappointment, like, wow, th these are not the housewives that I raised in the last five days. <laughs> Like, that was crazy. Like, Giselle, who? Giselle. You know, I, I wish that they would have stopped production or somebody, you know, brought Andy, whatever, production, Peacock, anybody would have called Karen Huger. Like, Karen, can, can you just, can you fly, can you fly out to Thailand in like the next three hours, like right away? We need you to handle Giselle because she's out of control. <laughs> Giselle is gonna look so stupid if the bottle is in fact like not missing and it's just like you know on the floor somewhere around the villa like I, I truly don't believe that anybody has it if anything I feel like Marisol but other than that I don't really think that anybody is really hiding it from her like who cares and even so if they were hiding it at this point I wouldn't even feel bad I would hide it on purpose like if I found it I wouldn't give it to Giselle just by the way she's acting so that's that Candace was like okay wait hold on we have an update on Leah so Portia <laughs> I'm like, here we go. Portia, I want to talk to you about the Instagram thing. You didn't tag me and Leah. Obviously, you have an issue with Leah. Why? Portia was just like, um, I don't really care. <laughs> she was just like, I don't care. Um, I don't care. No, I, I really don't care. No, I, I really don't. Okay, so what about it? I don't really care. And, you know, honestly, I just, you know, I have to be with, with Team Portia with this one because it's just like, who cares? Portia doesn't have to explain herself to either one of you. Like, if both of you were to have posted a picture and not tagged Portia, it wouldn't have, you two wouldn't have, you know, have to explain yourself to Portia either. Like, nobody cares. It's just a petty, stupid shit that Portia did to try to get underneath your skin. Was it petty? Probably, but you allowed it to get underneath your skin. And here you are giving her the satisfaction of confronting her exactly what she wanted. So I just, again, if I was her or Leah, I would have just ignored it and would have been like, okay, it's a tag on Instagram. I don't care. It is what it is. But she continued on by saying, I just feel like, you know, you know how the fans are with this. They twist the narrative, the, the narrative and everything. And now I just feel like you're cyber bullying me. And I'm like, oh, Candace, 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 Candace. <laughs> Like, she completely lost me after that. I'm like, what? Cyberbullying? Just because she didn't tag you and Leah on Instagram? It's that serious? Cyberbullying? Like, and, you know, I just, I don't know. It's just, I feel like Candace is really trying to have an issue with Portia. And Portia is just telling her, like, okay, I don't care. Like, it could have been petty, but so what? Like, just ignore it. It is what it is to keep it moving. And that's that. But Candace just continues on and on and on. And Portia, th this is where Portia also kind of lost me because Portia was just like, you know what, Candace? The other issue I have with you is that you're always yelling at me. Or every time we try to talk, you're always shouting and yelling. And I'm like, Candace? Yelling? I mean... She's loud, but I don't ever picture her as yelling or screaming or any of that. So I was kind of confused as to where I was, where that was coming from. Alexia, she wants to jump in it. And she says, well, you know what, Candace? You want to say that Porsche is also passive aggressive. But at the same time, you told us to shut the fuck up just the night before. And we don't talk like that. And I'm like, Alexia, Alexia. <laughs> I turned around all the way to look at her. I'm like, Alexia, I know this is not coming out of your mouth. When you yourself, this past season, you told Julia, that's her name, right, Julia? <laughs> You told Julia, oh, I feel like you'll be a good prostitute because you're Russian. Because, you know, that's the stereotype that Russians are good prostitutes. I feel like you'll be a good one. Did that not come out of your mouth? So now all of a sudden you're squeaky clean, you're classy, you don't use that type of language, you don't talk like that. Alexia, please, if Candace has a, a crazy mouth, so do you. Like, that is crazy that these housewives forget everything that they filmed in the past. 
<laughs> like that is crazy but you know Portia and Candace they get into it about this whole passive aggressive thing and I don't think that Candace yells or shouts or anything when she's in arguments or whatever she just you know if you come at her she retaliates and that's that it's not her way it's not her fault of the way she responds so Candace she started making me cringe because she started pretending to cry and everything and I'm like oh Candace stop that Portia she was just like oh can somebody give me a crying look can, can you make this into a triangle <laughs> again petty and then she started calling candace pj as in her daughter like oh look at you do you need some some what is what is it called pedialyte you need some pedialyte some baby food or whatever because that's what you're acting like you cry baby candace and i'm like wow portia like really you're gonna you're gonna call candace your own daughter's name and use your daughter as a joke or like trying to be funny that was in poor taste but okay pepsi again he's looking on in disappointment like I just feel like the whole Instagram thing is something stupid. And if I was Candace, I wouldn't have let it bother me or even have to address it. I would have been like, okay, she's being petty. Fuck her. Keep it moving. That's that. Pepsi, he interrupts them like, okay, so we're going to take this little um, this little tour on these little tiki trucks, I believe. They were so, so cute. I believe it's like a pink and blue one. They were so adorable, these little vans. So they go in it. And then, you know, I'm thinking, okay, they're about to explore the city. Two seconds later, the car ride is over. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what happened? I thought this was going to be like a thing. But no, it was just like a two minute ride to their actual sprinter van. So I believe we have Alexia, Marisol, um, Portia and Giselle in one van. And then we have every everybody else and Pepsi in the other. Portia was telling Giselle, I just feel like, you know, Candace is trying to have an issue with me. And I don't get why. Like, leave me alone. Pepsi, he's showing them pictures of his, um, his only child. But I'm not sure if he was joking or not. But he says, oh, by the way, I have four wives. And I'm like, wait a minute. Pepsi, you have four wives? Okay, Pastor Holy Whore. <laughs> Heather all of a sudden gains a backbone in the back seat by saying, oh, when Giselle was confronting me about the tequila bottle at the table, I almost flipped the table like Teresa Judah. It's like, who does she think she is? Like, I won't stand for that. Like, who do you think I am? And I'm like, Heather, Heather, where was this energy in person when Giselle was confronting you? I mean, she shut you down right away. She said, excuse me, I'm talking. And what did you say? I'm so I'm so glad that the cool girl is talking to me and she's paying me attention. Now all of a sudden you want to be a bad bitch in the back seat? No, Heather, it doesn't work like that. And Whitney called you out perfectly by saying, "Um, Heather, you always say all the cool stuff behind the person's back. You never say it to their face. You're coming off as two faced, and we're supposed to have just one face." So they finally get back to the villa, and Whitney she rushes out the van. She was just like, "Oh, I have an emergency. I have an emergency," and I wasn't sure if it was like a bathroom emergency or something like that but she rushes out and she runs towards the villa and i'm like wait a minute whitney are you sure that you don't have the casa blue bottle somewhere in your room because that was a little suspicious at least the timing of it was everybody else noticed they're like wait why is she running over there Hmm. So then they're all getting inside the, the villa. Marisol, she announces okay so later on we're gonna be having one of my events we're gonna be making cockies and i'm like oh so we're making alcohol again. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Okay, thank you, Marisol. Candace, she goes to visit Leah to see how she's doing. But before that, she goes to the bathroom. So as she's going in, Leah tells her, oh, um, uh, by the way, Candace, just flush the toilet because there's a tampon in it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Like, now we don't flush, Leah. Like, I get it that we probably all have our own bathrooms, but you don't, you don't want to flush your own toilet? Like, that is crazy. Like, that is gross. But, all right, so then Candace, she comes back out. She starts telling Leah about everything that, everything that happened at the lunch between her, Giselle, and Portia. And I feel like Candace was adding a little bit more words to the situation, or at least that's, that's the way I took it. She starts telling Leah, Leah, you won't believe what Portia said about you. She said she hates you. She said that she hopes that you do not come back for the Real Housewives in New York reboot. She doesn't want you back on Bravo at all. She doesn't even know why you're here. She actually didn't even know that you had an Instagram. Yeah, she's, she's, she actually prefers Ramona over you. Yeah, I'm sorry to tell you, but she hates you. <laughs> I'm like, Candace, I'm pretty sure that Portia didn't say all of that, but okay. So then meanwhile, Giselle, Giselle is losing her damn mind, walking all inside the villa, all over the place. She is screaming at the producers, at the, at the sexy producer at that. <laughs> Did y'all see him? 
But Giselle was just like, um, I need somebody to go check Candace's room right now. No, like right now. It needs to happen right, right now. I need a producer right now. Let's make it happen quickly. Hurry up. Let's go. And I'm like, wow, Giselle, that is crazy. The level of entitlement. Like you're talking to a producer. Like if I was the producer, I would have turned into a cast member so quickly. <laughs> Like, hold, hold this camera for me. Listen, Giselle, have you lost your damn mind? Let me tell you something. <laughs> like, you are not talking to me like this. And sexy producer is telling Pepsi, um, Pepsi, um, we got a cold floor too. <laughs> crazy housewife on the run in the villa so Giselle she continues going off she was just like okay so you said that Pepsi's coming right but is he actually gonna take something serious like he needs to take this situation serious I need somebody who's dedicated somebody needs to go look at Candace's room right now and I'm like Giselle calm the fuck down what is the big issue with this bottle like Giselle I know Giselle has done a lot of crazy things on her own show but this one I don't know it just it was just so so left field because it's just like what is truly pissing you off so badly about this bottle like again i just feel like she's looking for a reason to dump all of this on candace when candace i know that candace does not have that bottle like giselle she goes storming off in there and she's opening up the room she was just like oh hey leah how are you so you know i, I i'm pretty sure that candace already filled you in on everything right leah was just like yeah that portia basically hates me right giselle was just like wait what she never said that candace was like um i know it's not that she hates you per se <laughs> I'm like, oh, don't backpedal now, Candace. And then Giselle, the, hypo the hypocrisy jumped out again. She was just like, oh, you see, there goes Candace again, always adding extra things to the conversation. And I'm like, wow, Giselle. Now, are, don't you do the same? Didn't you just do the same thing this past season on Potomac? Hmm. With the whole situation with Chris and um and Ashley's friend and everything, like, do you not remember all of that? Oh yeah, he was grabbing her ass, and that came out of your mouth. And and what what did you say at the reunion? Oh, I was just spicing it up. You know, I use spicy words here and there, and now all of a sudden, it's an issue that Kansas does it, but. Ooh, okay, Giselle. So that was that. She tells Leah, you know what, Leah? I'm looking for my tequila bottle. And I know that you didn't do it because you have uh, liquor or whatever back at home. But I'm specifically looking at you, Candace. Candace, so what are we going to do? Are we going to go to your room together? Because I was on my way over there. And I'm like, wow. Gis Giselle is just, she's just feeling super bold. <laughs> Like the oxygen must be completely different in Thailand because Giselle, I don't know who this woman is because <laughs> usually she keeps it at like an 8 or like a 7, but here she's at like a 20. She was just like, so are we going to go to your room together or what's happening? Because we need to search your room up, room up now. I need my tequila bottle right now. Candace in the confessional, she says, um... I think, um, what's his name? Jamal's, uh, you know, checks towards alimony checks must be running out. And I don't understand. Maybe she's holding on to this bottle because she thinks it's expensive or something. <laughs> She's going to get some money out of it because I don't get why she's acting like this. Candace was like, you're not coming into my room. I'm sorry. That's not happening. And I'm not searching up anything. And again, I wouldn't give in to her, the producers, anybody. Like, if you're going to do it, just kick me off the show. Nobody's going through my stuff. And even if I do have the bottle, it's coming back home to me. <laughs> Candace comes out. So her and Giselle start getting into it. Giselle starts calling her a criminal. Candace says, uh, you're just envious. You're green with envy. And you're acting like a full-on Karen. You could kiss my ass. And that's exactly what Giselle was acting like by stomping around the entire villa telling all the producers the camera people pepsi oh i need this bottle i need this bottle somebody needs to go look for it right now and take it serious when it was never that serious over a tequila bottle giselle like you know the real housewives of dubai they would never act like this if somebody took their bottle they'll probably be like you know what i could just buy the company <laughs> And that's that. I'll get my new bottle like that. But you acting like this over a bottle, Giselle, of tequila. It was never that serious. But that was that. Then we see Pepsi. He's on the floor in the kitchen. He's just over it. I'm pretty sure that, you know, between Marisol, Marisol's tantrum that she had last week about her dirty ass room and, you know, everything else this whole entire trip and, you know, trying to cater to everybody and keep everybody happy. I'm pretty sure it finally got to him and he finally just cracked. You know, this was kind of like the cherry on top. So he manages to make his way over into the confessional. He, he starts crying, which is so sad. I'm like, wow, he was so bubbly and happy. Happy. He was so happy to greet all of them, you know, to be there for them and, you know, keep them happy and everything. And look, he did the best he can and he, they, he still can't obviously satisfy Giselle. And, you know, 
he gets a cry angle. He starts tapping his face because he's crying and everything. And he was just like, I don't like this. I don't like that. How they're speaking to each other. They're so rude to each other. And I just don't like that. They have no respect for each other. She's just going to continue asking me about this bottle. And I have nothing else to tell her. I already helped her out to the best that I can. Then Pepsi starts crying. And it was pretty sad to watch. Like, so unfortunate. He doesn't deserve any of this. On top of that, I am curious about Giselle. If she acts like this to the producers over there, to the Real Housewives of Potomac, behind the scenes because typically on ultimate girls trip we kind of pull the curtain back a bit we break the fourth wall we get to see what goes on behind the cameras a bit when they discuss it and giselle throwing this type of tantrum to the producers and telling them oh i need this right now right now somebody do it right now i need this done right now i also question does she act like this over there and we just don't get to see it hmm but side note the whole casa blue tequila has anybody tried it like is it worth fighting for <laughs> I'm so curious because it was never this serious. But let me know what you all thought about this whole episode down in the comments. Bye, everybody. Mwah.